Hello and welcome to a new episode of Web Demystified. I'm Jeremy and today we're going to talk about HTML. HT what? Well, basically HTML is a descriptive language that allows us to tell a web browser how to handle text content. And uh, it doesn't really make any sense, does it? Nope. Okay, we'd better get into some details. HTML is the oldest language of the web. Even though it took a few years to be formally defined, the very first web page created by Tim Berners-Lee was already using a proto-HTML. And if you're curious about it, that page is still online. If you are interested in the history of HTML, Wikipedia is definitely your friend. Here, we're going to focus on the technical side of things. HTML is an acronym standing for Hypertext Markup Language. It is quite self-descriptive, but it requires some little explanations. Let's start with that markup thing. It just means that HTML provides a system to annotate some plain text with tags. Those tags add semantic value to any text that will be used by browser to understand how to handle that text. Yeah, yeah, fine. How does it look? HTML tags are small strings of text made up of a pair of angle brackets surrounding its name and on which you can specify further related information using attributes. By surrounding some text with an open tag and a closing tag, you are creating what we call an HTML element. And we've created a paragraph. Uh, once you've created HTML elements, you just have to nest them in order to create an HTML document. Here is the basic structure of such a document. Hey, slow down. Where are all those tags coming from? And what the heck is that dark type thing at the top? All very good questions. First, a quick word about that dark type line. That line is a hint that tells web browser that your HTML document is a fully fledged modern HTML document. If you omit it, well, browsers will consider your document like all those documents that have been created in the early days of the web before HTML was standardized. For backwards compatibility reasons with those old documents, they have a special display mode called the quicks mode. This display mode is, well, quirky. To make it short, every browser has a different quicks mode for historical reasons meaning you can face different behaviors from one browser to the other. Yeah, more than usual. So, unless you're looking for trouble or know exactly what you're doing, you should avoid that display mode. In clear, just add that doc type line at the top and don't worry about it. If you're not afraid of a headache, you can read more in here. Okay, let's get more practical. What elements can you use to create your own HTML document? HTML follows rules defined by the HTML specification, which is maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium, aka W3C, an organization that will definitely have its own video. That specification defines all the expected behaviors of an HTML document, which include more than a hundred elements and all the nesting constraints. That's a lot. If you want to explore all the tags and their individual behaviors, I advise you not to get into the HTML specification. It's long, it's full of boring details, it's really not beginner friendly, it's not even web developer friendly. To be honest, it's not even friendly for the very authors. It's a highly technical document made for browser makers. Instead, I suggest you take a look at the MDN web documentation. It will provide you with a complete yet easy to understand documentation of all HTML tags. As a quick overview, there are tags for many things. Document sectioning, document metadata, block text semantics, inline text semantics, image and multimedia, embedded content, scripting, forms, data tables, and many more. Yeah, that's a lot, but clearly you don't have to remember everything. I don't. To be fair, one of the cool things about HTML, it's how resilient it is. It means that even if you do make mistakes, it's okay. Browsers will try to do their best to display something no matter what. So I would say that at this point, 
You should just fiddle with HTML and have fun with it. Whoa, hold on a second. What about that hypertext thing you mentioned earlier? Yeah, right. So hypertext is just a fancy word to say that an HTML document can create a link to another HTML document. Such link can be simply activated either by clicking, by touching, or by using a keyboard to move to that other document. That sounds quite ordinary these days, but in 1990, that was kind of revolutionary to be able to move from one document to the next without having to type its address. To create such links, HTML provides the A element. You can use it like this, and it will be rendered like that. Not the blue color and the underline, which are the default look and feels for links. Now, if you click on it, your browser will load the document available at the address provided by the href attribute. And, um, well, that's all the knowledge you need to know to start understanding HTML. Okay, let's recap. HTML is a markup language that allows to structure a text in order to make it understandable by web browsers. That HTML markup is made of elements formed by tags put around text. All valid HTML elements and their nesting rules are defined in a specification maintained by the W3C. Yeah, it's that simple. Frankly, HTML alone is a bit dull. We definitely need something else to make it pretty. You know what? Next up, we'll talk about CSS. Thank you all for watching this video. If you want to learn more and start fiddling with HTML, I highly suggest that you have a look at the Learn section of MDN. In the meantime, if you enjoyed that episode, feel free to like it and to share it with your friends. Spreading knowledge will definitely fill up your camera tank. To continue the discussion, feel free to comment down below or join me and my colleagues on Twitter. And finally, long live the open web. See you next time.